The madman of the car. That's the only thing they call him now. But that isn't what I call him. That's never been what I call him. He's Virgil. And is he mad? Who's to say? No one knows how they'll be changed by their obsessions until they are brought to the surface. Until the fog clears and what you desire breaks the horizon. You don't know how far you'd swim for it. Virgil swam and swam. And I watched every stroke. Every string, every string. I watched as he began to sink, and in the end, he and I both drowned. Allow me to start from the beginning. This whole shit show started with a call. One call that was the first ember in a fire that burnt everything. Hey, what's going on, Raf? Nothing much, Virgil. I'm thinking about filming this documentary. How about we film it together? Yeah, absolutely. We'd both seen too many Vice documentaries. Both been obsessed with their rawness and their ability to show you something that seems to live outside of morals, outside of societal norms, outside of the reality we existed in. But it was all real, and that was the beauty of it. And so there we were. Hanging out in Lamel's beach, throwing around stupid ideas for the film's content. Okay, so picture this. One of us gets COVID, right? And then we go out to some village and we find some witch doctor and then we just pay him to like perform voodoo or something on us. And then once we do that, we get cured and then we're not only the first to prove that voodoo exists, but that it cures COVID. But it doesn't cure COVID. Don't be so fucking pessimistic, Raph. You don't know that. That's a terrible idea, Verge. And we are definitely not doing that. First of all, you know I hate being called that. And right. second, let's hear a better idea than this guy. How about a documentary on how the meat production industry works here? Um, those types of things are huge nowadays and not a lot of people know how it works here. Do you even want to know though? I mean, I love meat, and ignorance is bliss, Raph. Just embrace that. I hate that I agree with that, but I do. You know what? Let's just get a bunch of random shots of things, and then we'll either just compile them all into like some sort of alternative freeform documentary, or we'll, or we'll think of a better idea along the way. We'll figure it out. It'll, it'll be fine. Yeah, all right. Um, until we come up with something better, that's not a bad idea. Finally, an agreement. I never get any agreements out of you these days. You've really gone astray psychologically, Raph. Yeah, whatever. It says you. Anyway, let's just start walking on these rocks. That'll be our first shot, and I think it'll be a pretty good one. I found a dead body on these ones. Bullshit. I swear to God, Raph. Right. So we began shooting, capturing anything that we thought could be of interest for the film. And we had what I thought was a good thing going. I was getting better and better with the camera and Virgil just kept coming up with ideas of what to shoot. He seemed happy with what was going on for a while, fulfilled. Little did I know, he was never fulfilled. After a couple of weeks of shooting, he made it clear, inviting me to his house for a talk about how we are going to move forward. Virgil lives alone most of the time. His folks hardly come around, constantly going on trips without him. And when I came to his house to discuss, it was clear he'd taken advantage of being left to his own devices. Raffi, how's it going, old pal? Jesus Christ, Verge, get it together. Bro, listen, take a drink, sit down, and let's talk about this movie. Don't let that camera stop rolling. I wanted to capture everything. So, What's up? And I'll have one drink, but no more drinking for you. Hey, try and stop me, Raph. I'd like to see you really try. But listen, this movie, I've just been thinking about it so much. It's just, it's missing so much, Raph. It's yeah. missing action and tragedy and drama and... Can't you see, Raph? I guess... I guess I can see, but... Then what else can we do? 
other than wait for something interesting to happen with our camera in our hands. No, that's where you're wrong. In fact, I'd say you've never been more wrong. Because you see, who is it really that just that decides what reality is in a movie? Is it God? No, Raph. It's the filmmakers. We I are think, the filmmakers. I think you're uh, taking this a little bit too seriously. I think our reality is enough, and why should we have to change it? You didn't let me finish, Raph. You know I hate that shit. And you're telling me that reality as it is is enough? This reality has never been enough for me. Never. This life is so mundane, it sickens me. And then this movie comes along and it gives me hope. But we haven't gotten anything more than just shots that are just beautiful. They're nothing more, more than aesthetic pleasantry, just devoid of any soul. It's just... We've got to just change the, the narrative, man. We've got, to take, we've got to get off this path that we're on that leads to a movie that ends up being forgotten by its audience in a matter of, like, months. We just, we can't do it like this, Raph. What do you suggest we do exactly? And from that point, the documentary's final form began to take shape. not enough. There has to be something I'm forgetting.
do it. We just blame it on someone else. <laughs> it'll be, it'll be good for the movie, bro. It'll be a tragedy for the movie. <laughs> Virgil killing his dog was when shit really hit the fan. By the next day, everyone knew what had happened. The buzz around the film, and the antics surrounding it that seemed to excite people before, began to disgust them, with Virgil's newest transgression seeming to cast a shadow of lunacy on everything we'd filmed. But that lunacy was always there, I guess. It was just that no one seemed to see it that way. I sure didn't. But by this point, Virgil and I were both forced to deal with the truth. And Virgil... Just couldn't come to terms with it. I should just live here. This is the type of home I deserve. You, you really shouldn't do that, Virg. Shut up, Raph. What do you know? I mean, what do I have to live for? Tell me, honestly. Um, I don't know. You have me. But you'll always have me. Are you hitting on me? God, you really have to ruin the moment. Yeah, I know that you're, that you're there for me. Peace. Peace at last. He began doing more and more hair. It sickened me to see, but I never really stopped him. With every stab of the needle, Virgil drew closer and closer to the state I'm afraid he'll be in forever. The state that he's in now. It was today that I heard from the doctors he'll never recover. And I truly just don't think that that I'll never recover either. I record this to tell mine and Virgil's story. I know that he'd want it this way, to let our story live on in some form so that someone can hear this and watch the videos and maybe take something away from it. Maybe feel that they'd seen something incredible. That's all we really wanted after all. But if this is where the movie ends for Virgil, I'd like for it to end for me now as well. Madman of the car. That's the only thing they call him now. But that isn't what I call him.